So this is sort of this is the train getting towards the last station, you know, perhaps. <laughs> Might go round one more time, I don't know. Oh, it's got to go around again. Yeah, but that's right. Next album's going to be a polka album. So. <laughs> <laughs> no respect for the pioneers With no one left to thank Riding the dream train Can't remember where we've been Riding the dream train Dream train, title track. Yes. Now this is a, this is a track that, <clears throat> in some respects, you might say, "Well, it ain't a country song, really." Um, it's it's different from the other nine tracks, only in in its attitude, and <clears throat> it's it, it just has to be played the way it's played. It was never going to be played any different. You're never going to ring a ning a ning a ning it up yeah. because. It has to be that way, and now it makes a great title track, and it, it just ties all the others in line and sh tells them where to sit and everything. It's just a, it's a good master track, if you like. Um, and I think a couple of hap a couple of things happened during this. When we recorded the band track, I only had one verse. <laughs> yeah, that, that happens to me a bit, and I you know I keep saying it. I was oh, I'll write, I'll write, I'll write another, and time would go on, and I still hadn't written, you know. Uh, and then it just came to me, and I wrote both the verses, you know, in the, in, within an hour. And I realised when I sang it through that they were biographical, autobiographical. Um, and so that made it very much more important to me because I don't ever do that. I don't write about me. And in this case, it was writing about my journey and this long train journey I've been <laughs> on for a million years. And then it had to be the title track. You know, I just thought this is so obvious. Yeah. That it's the title track, you know, after how many ever years it's been from the first album to now, now I've made a country album and I'm so excited. So this is sort of, this is the train getting towards the, the last station, you know, perhaps. <laughs> Might go around one more time, I don't know. Oh, it's got to go around again. Yeah, but that's right. Next album's going to be a polka album, so... <laughs> <laughs> but the, that, so that was the first thing that made it important to me. And the second thing was, once we cut the track, the band track, it never occurred to me that anyone else in the whole world should play on this track other than Kirk the Rhymes. You know, he's been my friend for so long and we played together on the road for years. And you've, you've witnessed him and known him. And he's a monster, I tell you. He is a monster. He is a monster. And... You know, once again, such a lovely bloke. He is. As good as you'll ever get on that instrument, but Sweet. what a gem to work with he is. He's just, it's just a treat. And so unique. I remember years ago we were in the studio doing some track for something and, and um, the producer was one of those people, one of those kind. Yeah. No, he's one of those kind. <laughs> no, <laughs> not that kind. <laughs> anyway... Um, Kirk had the sort of feature line in this. It was, it was like a commercial or a piece for television or something. And he had the, the solo and the guy said, um, came out after Kirk played a couple of goes at it, and he came out and he said, well, you know, I, I really think it needs to be kind of a lot more like, and he named a slide player, you know, some English slide player from somewhere. And Kirk looked at him and he gave that great little smile he had and he says, well, you know, he said, I kind of just play Kirk. <laughs> and the guy didn't have a clue what to say. <laughs> Whoops. And, it, you know, it turned out he played some amazing piece and it was very successful. But, you know, I've always remembered that. And for that reason, I, I, I've, I've only put him into things that I just know suit him perfectly. And that was as, if ever there was going to be a song that suited him perfectly. That song, Dream Train, which is the title track of Brian Cadd's new album, wasn't it amazing though, like some of the pedal steel work we canned, like we ditched out to fit Kirk in, it was like sublime. It was like you didn't just put this in just to put Kirk in the song. No, no. It made it go to another place because what was there was world class. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that that's what I, I think was so great, like... um. 
all the added parts that come in, like the cream on the cake, the icing on the cake, or whatever they call it, what it was actually replacing was still world class on another level. Oh yeah, yeah. And it just took it to the edge a bit. Yeah. Which we, I knew he was going to do that, but he had the best time, didn't he? He just oh, sat there and he, could, he got that great little smile every now and then. And, and I think the other thing, once again, for gear nuts and that, check him out, Kirk LaRonge, and a lot of these players, but I thought it was so cool. Walks in with his little bag with his slide, two or three different slides, a Strat, old Stratocaster, little 15-watt amp, and a little simple pedal board. No, like, gear for days and all that. It's just all in the fingers, all in the, mm. you know, it's all in him. Oh, yeah. And it's just, um, it was just such a treat to watch it just unfold in front of your eyes. You know, and sometimes you say, well, you know, it's like, it's a bit like Lowell George. And then you think, no, it's not. Actually, it's yeah. not. No. It's, it's just Kirk. Yeah. I, I just play Kirk. But, you know, another one too, Brian, the, the thing that might surprise a lot of people, because I've explained it to a couple of people, they don't pick up the little, dun, 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 the Brian Caddism on it. Oh, yeah. You know, like you started off with this real sort of funky sort of thing, and the next minute you just started going, Dong a dong a dong dong, and that, and it was like it just opened the whole thing up and added to it, and oh, I think that was just the exciting part of this whole album where we had time to make you know, those things happen. Just stuff or around. Let those yeah, happen. well, you know, like stuff around until a part come along. And go, that's it. Yeah, yeah, and then and then be brave enough to say that's it. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. There a, lot was a couple of times, of times you could. Yeah, yeah, a lot of times. In studio situations, you go, we're going to give me... Oh, and we used to hate that when we had yeah. real tracks, you know what I mean? Not virtual tracks, but when yeah. they were actually on a piece of tape. Yeah, yeah. And the, and the guitar was always a guitar player. would play solo and, and you'd go, that's it, don't, I don't want to change. Don't change. <laughs> just give me one more. I know I can do it. So eventually you'd do it just to shut him up and you'd drop it in, which meant that you erased... The yeah. track, the take that you really liked, yeah. and he never got close to that again. Nah. It used to make me crazy. <laughs> Fortunately, electronically, we can get away with that now. But anyway. But that there, I think, um, well, that's a hard one because everybody played their part, had so much room, it's so groovy, Dream Train. I think it's a hit, mate. I, I think that song, the album already is, but I think that song is a hit. Not released yet as a single? No, no, but we're looking at it because... It's gotten a lot of reaction, and considering that it was never going to be a single, mm. and there's some components in it that I think people just, they love the groove. They just settled back and pour another jack. Yeah, yeah I like that. But if I, can I give, a, can I give my awards? Yes. Okay. Go. Well, obviously Kirk. Yes. And Absolutely, Gus Van Wyck on yeah, bass. Because absolutely. If you, every bass player in the world needs to listen to what he played. Yep. It's so simple. It's just perfect. Every note is exactly where it has to be. And round. And it's, round. It's, it's, it's a big track without yeah. being over the top. From a small man. <laughs> you said that. No, but I can do it because I'm a small man. Oh, you can't. 